Shahira, right now one of the big stories out of Egypt is work on a new constitution. Where does that effort stand and what are the main points of contention? We're very concerned because um, the Constituent Assembly, which is the panel tasked with writing the new constitution, uh, was actually selected, its members were selected by the now dissolved parliament. And uh, we believe that it's not representative of Egyptian society. There are 100 members on the panel. 60 of them are Islamists, uh, so conservatives. And just six women are on that panel. So we are calling for a more egalitarian and a more democratic constitution, one that represents all Egyptians, uh, secularists, liberals, and, and women especially, because the main, the biggest bone of contention is the rights of women. Um, we've seen that in the article on gender equity, they have put a provision uh, linking uh, gender equality with Islamic jurisprudence or Sharia law, and that is subject to many interpretations. You know that Sharia law, a, a strict interpretation of Sharia can be disastrous for women because it can push them back, it can, uh, it, yeah, it will just basically um, uh, hinder women's rights. Halad, after the uprising and subsequent election, what is the climate on the ground now when it comes to the relationship between Egypt's leadership and its people? I saw where you recently wrote for CNN about a disconnect, if you will, between the issues being debated and the ones the average Egyptian is most concerned about. Absolutely. Uh, I, you can even use what we were just talking about, the consti Constitution and the, constitu uh, the, the Assembly writing the Constitution, uh, the draft for it, um, is, is a perfect ex example uh, of what's going on. There's a big disconnect of what people and their aspirations uh, there is and what the government and people in power are trying to do. Again, this is a joke. For a, for a constitution draft, we met them, by the way, uh, as part of the child rights uh, help, and we're trying to sit with them uh, as a UNICEF representative, talking to them about what are the rights that are going to be in the constitution and drafting them and, and giving them advice about that. And they sat for hours taking notes. But then I felt something was wrong. How come we don't f f f had a feedback from them? And I had to, you know, open up a subject or two. For example, Egypt is one of the f three or four countries in the world that still have FGM, uh, uh, applied, practiced to a lot of women, young girls, female genital mutilation, uh, and I thought maybe I should open that subject because I knew that Islamists are a bit confused about that, especially in Egypt, because they use it as a political message that changing that would mean we're going non-Islamic, for, for, for example, or Western, which is so stupid. A lot of Islamic countries don't have this practice. It's just a, it's a political thing, so they're politicizing this, and they're not even paying attention to little girls who are being basically butchered. And I had to open the subject, and it ended up with a big fight, basically. The woman, the only woman who was there, uh, who kept saying, I'm not Islamist, I'm not Ikhwan, she ended up saying, I don't want to talk about that. I said, what are we going to talk about? We're talking about child rights, and Egypt has this huge problem, and we have to face it, and we have to maybe talk about it when you talk about the child protection in, in, uh, in, in the Constitution. And it ended up with them standing up, saying, the Prophet... FGM'd his, his daughters. And that, all this rhetoric that came out from nowhere, and I knew it, then this is a joke. They left the room, we left our, our notes, and we all smiled because we, f we knew this will never pass. In Egypt today, there is not one person who's weak enough to let that happen, a woman to be veiled or, or you know, d uh, told what to do, uh, uh, and not one strong enough to dictate people what to do. And that is the big change. And that is why even the Islamists now in government uh, is, are still using this whole old routines of Mubarak that will never work. It will never work.